You guys will be mind blown by this. Five months ago, I placed these three young micro squirrels, also known as pygmy African dormice, into Orcadia, my giant rainforest canopy vivarium. Here they were able to hunt various available insects, nest where they wanted, and roam freely in this massive natural space, which was actually really massive as it was attached by way of a glass bridge to Pandora, my giant rainforest floor vivarium on the floor below, and Hydromeda, a giant wetlands vivarium. I knew that if my simulated rainforest within glass could provide the micro squirrels all the resources they needed, they would breed. An idea I found to be pretty cool, because biologically speaking, the tiny mammals would provide the forest enormous benefits by way of their poop and urine, which were valuable fertilizer for the plants. Sure enough, I began to spot new babies appearing at the food bowl of supplementary pellets and fruit. I didn't think there would be an overpopulation problem, at least not yet. But a few weeks ago, I began to notice that our population of prey insects, specifically dubia roaches and crickets, were gradually dissipating until one day, all prey insects went completely extinct in our forest. Where had all our roaches and crickets gone? It couldn't have been the micro squirrels, could it? In my mind, I estimated that there were probably around four or five micro squirrels by now. And that number sure wasn't enough to exterminate thousands of prey insects from our forest. Many of you begged for me to remove the micro squirrels from the tanks. Until last week, I finally decided to do it and set up a trap. I caught my first micro squirrel, placing it into a holding tank until I could catch the rest of its colony. But AC family, I have a really concerning update. So I recently added in a thousand or so crickets to restart a new population. And after just three days, that new cricket population went completely extinct again. Wait a minute, just how many micro squirrels were there exactly living in our forest? As I began to proceed with this mass trapping operation, the truth as to how prolific the micro squirrels had secretly been in just the five months they were allowed to live freely within our rainforest completely blew my mind. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon. Welcome to the AC fam. Enjoy. Right, little one, I so wish you could talk. How many of you are there exactly? I'm sure it had a good idea, but obviously I would have to find the answer out myself. You can live here for now until I collect your entire colony. Meanwhile, I prepared you some pellets, watermelon, and your favorite, dubia roaches, chopped up for your convenience. I need you to be nice and healthy. I left the youngster to settle into its new temporary home, where it eventually buried itself under the central stump. It didn't know it yet, but this was not going to be its final destination. I had plans for it and its entire family. I reset the trap and placed it back into Arcadia with the mango pit lure on the floor and dubia roach bait still quite alive. I had no idea I was in for the surprise of a lifetime. So when this recent population of colonizer crickets went extinct, I knew something was up. Just to be safe, I also removed the pair of quails, Beyonce and Jay-Z, that had resided in Pandora for the past several months, since they too were partial insect eaters. Have you guys been eating all the crickets? Tell me. The quails usually only eat tiny crickets, and most of the colonizers were large adults. So I suspected no. But to be safe, I evicted them. It was sad to see them leave our rainforest. But I knew they would learn to love their new, more spacious kingdom in my giant home aviary. 
So AC family, before we continue trapping the micro squirrels, let's play a game. How many micro squirrels do you think there are? Leave your guess in the comments. And then by the end of the video, go back to your comment and let us know if you were right. My guess was about five. In my mind, there just couldn't be a ton of them. Like many of you in the comments were suggesting. Well, later in the night, the trapping continued. Micro Squirrel 2, another youngster, sex undetermined. It crawled beneath the stump, joining its sibling. Micro Squirrel 3, a male. There you go, little one. What was great was that the micro squirrels, once captured, no longer took interest in the food in the trap. So I could simply use the bait again when resetting the trap. I continued to trap through the night. Micro Squirrel 4 captured. Another male, possibly one of the originals, named Theodore. morning, Micro Squirrel 5 was captured. A fat female. I wondered if this was also one of the originals, named Dora. In you go. Now of these five that we captured, I only saw two of the three originals. There was one more, a wild-type brown-colored Micro Squirrel missing named Dorothy. I guess she was still somewhere hiding inside, but we would have to wait until night to continue with the trapping. Night fell in our rainforest, and beneath the soil, a shimmer of green caught my eye. Ah, beautiful. A new green jewel beetle had just emerged from its pupa underground. It would soon burrow up to the surface after its exoskeleton hardened. In fact, as I looked around Pandora, the forest was just full of these gorgeous green jewel beetles. They were literally everywhere tonight. Stunning color. I watched this one climbing the hanging Spanish moss. They just love the uppermost portions of the vivarium. Now these beetles are interesting in that they live most of their lives underground as larvae, where they feed on plant roots, then emerge above ground to eat plant leaves and flowers. My guess was they came from eggs laid by jewel beetles that I added in last year, which meant these jewel beetles were our first Pandoran natives. It was amazing to see them emerging in all their glory. Now as it relates to the micro squirrels, what I find interesting is that although there were so many of these beetles around, and though they are avid plant eaters, I wasn't quite afraid of them causing too much detriment to our rainforest ecosystem, because their exact impact on the forest is seasonal, depending on what life stage they're at, and they mature as a generation. As a result, there are periods when some root systems of their favorite plants are impacted, 
when they're larvae, and then there's a period of when there is no impact, when they develop into pupae, which gives the plants time to regenerate. And then they emerge as beetles, where they eat only their favorite plant leaves, then die after laying eggs, which gives the plants more time to regenerate again. The generation matures together and dies together. Their impact to the forest comes in waves. This, however, is in direct contrast to the micro squirrels, who have staggering generations that overlap. And so the micro squirrels are constantly taking resources from the forest ecosystem, leaving no time for regeneration of said resources, which eventually led to the cricket and roach extinction. It was a good thing I was removing the micro squirrels now. It was time to check the trap in Orcadia. Captured. Now, AC family, I was shocked to discover that it wasn't Dorothy in the trap. Micro Squirrel 6 was another young male. Hmm. I placed it into the tank and noticed it was frozen scared. It refused to move from its spot. I moved in to pet it to hopefully calm it down. To my surprise, it didn't flee nor try to bite me. I suppose micro squirrels are like pet rats whom I used to breed back in the day in that yes, they do make cool pets, but you have to get lucky to find these extra tame ones, particularly when they're young. I'm sorry, little one. I'm sure these past couple of nights have been terrifying watching your family disappear one by one from the forest. You'll find them all here now. I continued to trap through the night. Later that night, I caught another, Micro Squirrel 7. But this looked like Dora again. What? Dorothy was still inside. I screamed when I spotted Micro Squirrel 8, who was definitely a wild type female, but was a youngster, not Dorothy. Are you kidding me? By Micro Squirrel 9, I was flabbergasted. An adult female, not quite wild type colored. This was not Dorothy either. Seeing as there were now nine micro squirrels in the holding tank, I decided they needed some serious food and decided to unleash a ton of crickets for them to hunt. Through the night, I caught them actually catching and feeding on the crickets, which to me solidified in my mind that these micro squirrels were indeed the ones responsible for the cricket and roach extinction. Had I known there were nine plus Dorothy all living inside, then perhaps yes, I would have much sooner pointed the finger at the micro squirrels as the ones responsible for wiping out our prey insect population. Sorry, AC family. You guys were right. I was committed to making things right now. In the morning, guess who I spotted? Dorothy. Finally. I placed her into the tank, where she stood still for a moment and ran up to the corner. I realized she was standing right in the colony's bathroom site. She probably was terrified and darted towards the scent of her family. Don't worry, Dorothy. They're around. You're now all reunited. 
not. That night, I was speechless when I found Micro Squirrel 11, another youngster, laying curled up in a ball in the corner of the trap. It looked like it had gotten drenched from the morning rain. I released it into the tank. It refused to run away. As I looked at its drenched fur, I realized that, hey, it wasn't actually wet. Touching its fur, the micro squirrel was completely dry. But the juices from the mango had made it sticky. Poor little guy. I took a wet paper towel and tried my best to loosen up the sticky mango juice. I knew its colony would eventually groom this gunk off, but I love taking the opportunity to act like a colony member and assist in cleaning it off. This was another one of the rare tame ones. In this moment, I truly admired the micro squirrel and felt so much love and appreciation for them. Such a huge ecological impact in such a tiny package. I loved how much motion and excitement they brought to the rainforest during their reign. I'm really gonna miss seeing you guys jumping around the treetops. Perhaps in the future, I'll make a reintroduction. This was the final micro squirrel, as I trapped no more after it. The bait remained untouched for days, until it was found by red ants and devoured, and edges of the mango eaten by other insects. Now some of you may be asking, what do I plan to do with these 11 micro squirrels? Well, my senior green tree python Valentino was about to get a very happy surprise. It was time to fulfill a long time promise I made to him last year. But lo and behold, it's not to eat micro squirrel meat. The micro squirrels will be adopted out in batches and I've chosen to personally keep the two really tame youngsters as my pets. But as per Valentino's happy surprise, the time has come. Valentino. Your patience will finally be rewarded. It's finally your turn to enter your new kingdom. Vote in my community tab to affect this story. 